A scorched wasteland filled with mutants, killer robots, and warring tribes? For over 25 years, this game series has shocked and excited an ever-growing legion of fans. The lore is detailed, complex, and immense. A new Amazon series is set to expand the already massive world. So what's coming our way? How in the world did we get here? And what the hell is that? It's time to crack open the vault on one of the most influential series in gaming history. Here is the complete story of Fallout. The Fallout universe has an almost identical history to our own, right up until the end of World War II. Culture and technology diverged from our own around this period. The technological innovations in Fallout geared toward nuclear energy and mechanical engineering. Instead of smartphones and laptops, this world is filled with robots and fusion-powered cars. Strangely enough, culture completely stagnates, leaving America frozen in a permanent 1950s look. The depletion of energy reserves in the mid-2000s wipes smaller countries off the map. Surviving nations declare all-out war. The largest of these conflicts is a war between the U.S. and China. It begins in 2066 when China invades and annexes Alaska in an attempt to seize its remaining petroleum. Alaska is eventually taken back by the Americans, but Pandora's box had been ripped open. In 2077, hostilities between the two countries culminate in the Great War. A two-hour nuclear missile exchange that engulfs the whole world in flames and plunges humanity into another dark age. Now strap in, because the end of the world is where the games begin! Fallout, a post-nuclear role-playing game, was developed and published by Interplay in 1997 and is the first game in the Fallout series. The game starts almost a century after the nuclear devastation of the Great War, in the year 2161. You play as the Vault Dweller, a human born and raised within Vault 13, one of several massive underground Fallout shelters. And that's where we get the term. The people of Vault 13 have lived for decades in hermetic isolation. When the crucial water chip malfunctions, Vault 13 is left with a dwindling water supply. The Vault Overseer assigns you the crucial task of sourcing a replacement chip. Armed with a Pip-Boy 2000 wrist-mounted computer, a soon-to-be staple of the series, and scant supplies, you run for help from nearby Vault 15, only to find it broken and abandoned. The adventure then leads into the vast wasteland, aka the decimated remains of what was once Southern California. Just in the nick of time, you discover a life-saving replacement ship in Vault 12. The water system is successfully repaired and the day is saved. However, the Vault Overseer grows alarmed by your reports of mutants in the wasteland. He charges you with a new mission. Uncover and halt the source of these mutations. Further investigations unveil that humans are being transformed into super mutants through exposure to the Forced Evolutionary Virus, or FEV. These super mutants, led by their mutant leader, the Master, aim to convert all humans into super mutants, establishing what they term as unity on Earth. The unity will bring about the Master race. Master. Master! One able to survive. The children of the cathedral serve as a facade, orchestrated by the master. They appear as a pious religious group, but are meant to deceive humans into compliant exposure to the virus. The children are setting up hospitals all over the place. I think they're trying to get people to trust them. Guys, please don't leave conspiracy theories in the comments. To stop the mutations, you must dismantle the vats containing the FEV. You infiltrate and battle through the children's cathedral on a collision course with the master. You ultimately discover a prototype vault beneath the cathedral. Within this vault, you are given the option to one, persuade the master of the futility of his plan, two, execute him immediately, or three, trigger an explosion to obliterate the cathedral. Personally, I prefer option three. Upon finally returning to Vault 13, you were denied entry by the Overseer. He now fears you and your potential to inspire others to leave the Vault. The Overseer then exiles you into the Wasteland. I guess no good deed goes unpunished. 
1998's Fallout 2 takes place 80 years later. After the Overseer exiled the Vault Dweller in Fallout, the character traveled north with several companions, founding a village in what was once Oregon. In 2241, the village, Arroyo, is experiencing the worst drought it has ever faced. Confronted with a dire situation, the village elder turns to the direct descendant of the Vault Dweller. You! Also known as the Chosen One. You are the Chosen One! You are tasked with securing a Garden of Eden creation kit, or GEC. This device promises to transform the desolate wasteland into a thriving, bountiful ecosystem. For this adventure, you are equipped with the Vault Dweller's jumpsuit, a Pip-Boy 2000, a Vault 13 water flask, a spear, and some initial funds for the quest, which are actually just bottle caps. Shiny, beautiful bottle caps. Embarking on the journey, you eventually locate Vault 13, where the Gek is believed to be, only to find it inhabited by intelligent death claws, genetically engineered beasts the army created before the Great War. Upon returning to Arroyo, you discover the village captured by remnants of the United States government, now known as the Enclave. They notoriously terrorize the continent with their superior technology. Venturing further into the wasteland, you unearth more about the Enclave's plan. Both the villagers of Arroyo and the inhabitants of Vault 13 were captured for experimentation with the forced evolutionary virus. You liberate your kin from the Enclave's control, destroying their oil rig base in the process. With the Gex aid, the inhabitants of Vault 13 and Arroyo herald in a new era. Together, they transform the once struggling village into a thriving city. There is hope in the post-apocalyptic world for the first time in almost two centuries. That'll probably last, right? <laughs> two standalone games, Fallout Tactics and Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, were released in the decade between Fallout 2 and Fallout 3. Both games focus on the quasi-religious, technocratic military order, the Brotherhood of Steel. 2001's Fallout Tactics tells the origin story of the Brotherhood. The inhabitants of a vault in California are determined to restore civilization. Using their superior weapons, they reclaim the surrounding wasteland. Welcome to the Brotherhood of Steel. In 2004's Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, players embark on a journey with an eclectic group of characters. You unravel the mystery behind the disappearance of your Brotherhood comrades. A sinister plot orchestrated by a rogue Brotherhood member, Addis, comes to light. You and your team are forced to confront Addis before he uses the FEV for his own evil ends. 2008 brought the long-awaited Fallout 3. The game's story moves the action to the East Coast for the first time. In this game, you play as the Lone Wanderer, who was raised in Vault 101 under Washington, D.C. In 2277, your father, James, purposefully leaves the vault. James' departure triggers chaos, prompting the vault overseer to lock down the vault and dispatch security guards to come after you. With the assistance of Amada, the overseer's daughter, awkward, you escape from the vault and embark on a quest to locate James. You start your journey in the nearby town of Megaton, named after an undetonated atomic bomb at its center. You then explore the ruins of Washington, D.C. and eventually reach Rivet City, a fortified human settlement situated on a derelict aircraft carrier. It is there you encounter Dr. Madison Lee, a scientist who collaborated with James in the past. Lee reveals to you that your parents once lived outside Vault 101 and worked on Project Purity. The project was a plan to purify water in the Potomac River, using a giant water purifier in the Jefferson Memorial. That's right, another plot focused on sourcing clean water. I guess none of the civic planners survived the nukes? <laughs> no. You ultimately discover James intends to revive Project Purity by obtaining a GEC. You and Amada track James to a VR prison in Vault 112. After freeing him, you return to Rivet City and your trio convinces Dr. Lee and others to resume work on Project Purity. However, your efforts are interrupted by an enclave invasion led by Colonel Augustus Autumn. 
James sacrifices himself to prevent Autumn from gaining control, flooding the control room of Project Purity with radiation. You seek refuge with the Brotherhood of Steel at the Citadel. With the Brotherhood's assistance, you retrieve a Gek from Vault 87. However, upon attempting to leave Vault 87, you are captured by the Enclave. Again? And the Gek is confiscated. At the Enclave's base, U.S. President John Henry Eden, revealed to be a sentient supercomputer, all hail the robot overlord, offers you a private audience. Meeting with Eden, you learn of his plan to contaminate the water supply with a modified FEV to exterminate all mutated life in the wasteland. Forced to take a sample of the FEV, you return to the Citadel where you join the Brotherhood in a final assault on the Jefferson Memorial, using a centuries-old military robot named Liberty Prime. Obviously. With the facility's reactor melting down, you are given one of three cataclysmic options. One, do nothing, thereby destroying the whole facility and everyone inside. Two, sacrifice only yourself to input the code and stop the explosion. Or three, send the Brotherhood of Steel or one of your mutant companions into the chamber to enter the code for you. A way better option. 2010 brought us the perennial fan favorite, Fallout New Vegas. The game takes place in the year 2281. The setting is the region around the former city of Las Vegas, now known as the city-state of New Vegas. You play as a courier employed by a company called Mojave Express, who awakens in the town of Good Springs after being shot and left for dead by the mobster Benny, voiced by the late great Matthew Perry. What in the goddamn? You want a reason? How about four? Your mission is to retrieve the stolen Platinum Chip, the key to controlling the robot army that protects New Vegas. Ultimately, you are thrown into a power struggle between three factions. There's Caesar's Legion, a Roman Empire-obsessed militia from Arizona, the New California Republic, or NCR, and Mr. House, an almost 300-year-old casino magnate. The three entities fight for control over the Platinum Chip and the Hoover Dam. Whoever controls the dam and the power it creates controls the whole region. The conflict escalates towards an all-out battle at the Hoover Dam, with the courier siding with either Caesar's Legion, the NCR, or Mr. House, expelling the other two groups in the process. Whichever group you side with comes out victorious. Separately, and frankly a much more badass way to play, you choose to betray all three factions and seize control of the dam for yourself gaining complete power over New Vegas. Vegas! Vegas, baby, Vegas! 2015's Fallout 4 takes place over the largest time period of any game in the franchise. The story starts decades before Fallout 1, in 2077, just before the Great War begins. In Sanctuary Hills, Massachusetts, the protagonist, either Nate or Nora, depending on who you play as, is invited to join Vault 111 by Vault Tech, the company that built all the underground vaults. Suddenly, there are warnings of an imminent nuclear attack following strikes on New York City and Philadelphia. Upon entering Vault 111, you are deceived into entering cryogenic suspension. Yes, just like Fry in Futurama. Things pretty much go downhill from there. You later witness your spouse's murder and your child, Sean, being abducted. Finally re-emerging in 2287, your character, dubbed the sole survivor of Vault 111, vows vengeance and Sean's rescue. Returning to find Sanctuary Hills devastated after 210 years, you reunite with your robotic butler, Codsworth. The robot advises seeking help in Concord. Along the journey, you befriend and aid the Minutemen militia, led by Preston Garvey. Venturing to Diamond City, built on the remains of Fenway Park, let's go Red Sox, you uncover the Institute and its sinister activities involving synthetic human replacement. You also learn about your spouse's killer, Conrad Kellogg, as well as his connections to the Institute. After exacting revenge on Kellogg, you teleport into the Institute. Once inside, you discover a now elderly Sean is actually the Institute's director. Sean tells of his abduction by Kellogg for synth experimentation due to his pre-war DNA purity. Sean also reveals that he is dying of cancer. That's right, no one gets to catch a break in Fallout. Sean wishes for you to become his successor. Wiping out opposing factions, you assume control upon Sean's death. Alternately, you can devise a plan to oppose the Institute. 
eventually leading to its total destruction. Fallout 76 is the franchise's first full-blown prequel. The story is set in 2102, almost 60 years before the first Fallout game. Vault 76 is opened and its inhabitants are tasked with repopulating the wasteland around the Appalachian Mountains. The Vault Overseer discloses a clandestine directive to you. Secure nuclear weapons dispersed across Appalachia's still-functioning missile silos. Site Alpha, Site Bravo, and Site Charlie. During your quest, you learn that local groups are being attacked by the Scorched. The Scorched were infected by the Scorched Plague, carried by Scorch Beasts, mutated bats exposed to an enclave bioweapon. Yep, okay. So far, this all sounds like a Fallout game. Recognizing the Scorched threat beyond Appalachia, your goal is to destroy the Scorched Beast's nest. You eventually find the nest and launch a nuke at it from one of the silos. Somehow that doesn't do the trick and you have to enter the nest to find out why. Inside, you find a laboratory hinting that the Scorch Beast may have been created artificially. It's just impossible to find organic Scorch Beast these days. While the nuke you launched failed to destroy the underground nest, it did manage to awaken the Scorch Beast Queen, and she's super pissed off about it. You confront the Queen, kill her, and the collective consciousness of all Scorch Beasts, neutralizing the threat. Post-victory, you aid local villagers and Vault 76 residents in rebuilding the Appalachian Wasteland. Amazon's Fallout series takes place further into the timeline than any of the games. It is set in 2296, and centers around Vault 33 and the Boneyard, AKA the ruins of Los Angeles, California. Bethesda director Todd Howard recently said in an interview that the show does not directly adapt any of the games. And for this it was, hey, let's do something that exists in the world of Fallout. It's not retelling a game story, can reference things in the games, but isn't a retelling of the games that exists in the same world, but is its own unique thing. So it adds to it. Created by Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy of Westworld fame, the series stars Ella Purnell, Walton Goggins, Chris Parnell, and Kyle MacLachlan. Everything we've seen from the series so far makes us think it has the right mix of sci-fi action, humor, and batshit craziness to bear the name Fallout. Sadly, we all might be waiting a while for another Fallout game. Sources at Bethesda Game Studios have stated that work on Fallout 5 won't begin until the sixth Elder Scrolls game is complete. With that game's release currently estimated to be in 2026, it seems the next Fallout game is a ways off. Until that day, we'll have to be happy with the memories of more than two centuries of post-apocalyptic chaos Fallout has given us, as we save our bottle caps for the next adventure. <laughs>